Okay, so back again. Um, while I was in between videos, I went and found some scotch tape, so that uh, should be super helpful. And uh, before we start the pi over um, 3 and pi over 6 angles finding their coordinates, I just wanted to go over again the idea of using reference triangles, um, reference angles to get into your other quadrants from the first quadrant. So if um, you tape down your yellow layer uh, where we chop the circle into four pieces and then tape your reference triangle for the pi over four angle. Okay, then we can label some of these values again. So this coordinate at zero uh, radians was one comma zero. And then up here at pi over two, that's zero comma one. Okay, and then over at pi, our x's become negative. So negative one, comma zero. And then down at three pi over two, the y's become negative. So zero, negative one. And uh, we just found in the last video that the coordinate at pi over four was square root of two over two, comma, square root of two over two. And that's in quadrant one where x's and y's are both positive. Okay, in quadrant two, remember that x is um, negative now, but the y's are still positive. So when I take uh, from my circle here, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out those other, um, those other sides. So I'll grab this one. Uh, oh. And I'm going to make triangles whoops, out of these. So we'll fold that down, that down so we can get a straight edge. And now we've got two more. There we go. Okay, so if I take this triangle from my first quadrant, I reflect it over into my second quadrant. So now this reference triangle is in the second quadrant. It's still a pi over four angle. So this is one pi over four, two pi over four. That makes this angle three pi over four. And it's coordinate because the x and the y distance, um, this is my x distance, this is my y distance, has to be the same, right? It's the same triangle just flipped over into another quadrant. These are still um, in magnitude, root two over two, root two over two, but because the direction now has changed from my x's being positive to my x's being negative, I need a negative on my x coordinate in quadrant two. Okay, now I'm gonna take that reference triangle from the first, from the first quadrant and reflect it into the third quadrant. So there's my second and now same triangle, but now I'm in quadrant three. So I need to tape that down. And that angle is, um, if I count around to find its value, one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four. This one now is five pi over four. And same x, um, x distance across, same y distance up and down. So coordinate is still root two over two, root two over two. But in quadrant three, both the x and the y values are negative now because x is going um, in a negative direction, y is going down in a negative direction. So both the x and the y both need negative signs on their coordinate. Okay, and then we'll take that last triangle and I don't know how perpendicular that was, but um, if I take that one now uh, and reflect it into quadrant four, and tape that one into place, right? These uh, kind of look like a bow tie, right? Um, sometimes we call them bow tie angles, these uh, reference triangles, but this is um, one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four, five pi over four, six pi over four. So this guy is seven pi over four, and it's gonna have the same root two over two, comma, root two over two, as all of the other green bow tie um, angles have. But now we're in quadrant four, where X is positive again, but the Y is still negative from quadrant three. So we leave the positive root two over two for the X, but make the Y coordinate negative. So this is my quadrant one, quadrant two, 
quadrant three and quadrant four uh, coordinates for the pi over four angles. Now we need to put in the pi over uh, six values and the pi over three values. So if we start here with the pi over three, okay, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with these green. I'm need, uh, gonna cut out one of them and that would bring me this far. So here's one pi over three. Okay, and that is gonna get me to right here. So this angle right there, that's pi over three, one pi over three. Now, it, if I want a reference triangle for that, I need to drop the perpendicular right straight down. So I'm gonna fold this to get a 90 degree angle. So straight down to the X axis at a right angle, a little further. Yep, that looks pretty good. So with the scissors, I'll go ahead and cut that on. Whoosh. Okay, so here is my right angle. And I'm gonna use some tape here just to hold that in place for a second. There we go. Okay, so that is my pi over three angle. So I'll go ahead and write pi over three in the corner there. That's my um, pi over three. It, the pi over three angle is the whole orange um, angles sector here, right? And uh, that takes up, if I put my my whole orange circle back on here, right? there we go. see how that fits in there. Those pi over threes, that's a third of the top half of the circle, and there's 180 degrees in there. So that's the same as taking 180 divided by three, which is uh, 60 degrees. So this angle in the corner here is 60 degrees, and this is 90 because it's a right triangle um, that we're using as our our reference triangle. And uh, so if this is 60, this is 90, that means the pi, um, or sorry, not this is the 60 pi over three, but this corner right up here, that's gonna be 30 degrees because this is a 60, 90, 30. Now, if you remember from geometry, your rules for 30, 60, 90 right triangles, um, this pi over three angle or 60 degree angle down here, that's the larger of the two. And in the, um, the rules for 30, 60, 90 triangles, um, there was a ratio that went like this. I'll find my marker, there it is. So in a 30, 60, 90, oh, that's not very 30, 60, 90 looking. Let's try that way. That's a little better, mm, not much. Let's make that shorter. There, that's a lot better. Okay, so if this is my um, my 60, this is my smaller angle, my 30, and this is my 90. So in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, your hypotenuse is, uh, you've got your one um, for your hypotenuse, and then half of that hypotenuse is always your short side, and then square root of three, right, times your uh, your short side gets you your long side. So this is my one, my hypotenuse, um, which is the radius of the circle. So the shorter side has to be the one half. The longer side across from the larger angle, that has to be the square root of three over two. And that's your 30, 60, 90 right triangles uh, rules. So if you, um, if you are rusty on that, uh, you can, you can watch some YouTube videos on that. That's uh, the geometry piece of it. But uh, just suffice it to say for these purposes that across from our bigger angle, the pi over three or 60 degree angle here, this is the longest side. So that has to be the Y direction, the longest side. Um, or well, I mean, other than your hypotenuse, but the longer of your two straight sides here, um, for the coordinate. So your y value of this point is the square root of three over two. That's your long side across from the 60 or the pi over three degree um, angle. The smaller angle up here in this corner was the 30 degrees. That's across from the shortest side and that is your one half. 
And that kind of visually, it makes sense, right? If you look at the distance um, from here to here, it's about this, well, it's exactly the same um, as from here to here. It's exactly half of your uh, distance across the radius. So as we reflect this coordinate now, one half root three over two, we reflect that into the second quadrant. I'm gonna need another one of these orange sections. Each one of these is pi over three. Okay, and they each are gonna need to be um, cut the same way that we did with a to get a reference triangle. So we need to use that as a template to get our perpendicular line. Oops, lost it. No, I'll hold it this way when I cut. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got four all together. So we take this first quadrant. This was one pi over three. We're gonna reflect it into quadrant two. So now we have two pi over three. So we'll use some tape, tape that guy into place here. So this was one pi over three. This is two pi over three. And in quadrant two, the X is negative, but the Y is positive. So when I bring this coordinate with me, the one half comma root three over two for that reference triangle, I need to make the X negative and the y stays positive. So one pi over three and two pi over three, um, they have the same reference angle of pi over three. Um, so they have the same numbers in their coordinate in their ordered pairs, only in quadrant two, the x is negative. Now when I take that and reflect it into quadrant three, right? So it comes right down here like this and tape that into place. There we go. So now I have the same reference triangle, um, same x distance, same y distance as my first quadrant. So the ordered pair is still gonna be one half root three over two. So one half root three over two. But now that I'm in the third quadrant, both the x and the y are negative. So I need to put a negative on my x and a negative on my y coordinate. And this was one pi over three, two pi over three, three pi over three. So this one is gonna be four pi over three um, in quadrant three. Okay, now we've got one more to place and that'll go into the fourth quadrant. So as I take this, um, there we go. Take this one in quadrant three, reflect it over the y-axis. So now I'm in quadrant four. Here's my right angle lined up along the x-axis and we'll go ahead and tape that one down. And this was, as we count around the circle again, just for practice, one pi over three, two pi over three, three pi over three, four pi over three. That makes this one, you guessed it, five pi over three. And so five pi over three has the same coordinate, right? The one half root three over two as um, all the other orange angles, one half root three over two, only in quadrant four, the X stays positive. It's the Y though that is still negative, okay? And those are um, the pi over three angles. Okay, we'll come back in the next video and do um, the purple pie over six.